so today we will discuss the synopsis of the two topics of first year puc neural control and coordination including the chemical control and coordination so what is coordination coordination is the process through which two or more organs interact and complement the functions of one another like when you take the brain brain is controlling all other functions and when you want to walk your body should uh, communicate with the other your legs you should communicate with other parts through the brain so this type here all the body is coordinating to the legs to walk if you want to open your eyes your eyelid should support your the skull region to do this so coordination is a action or process or through which two or more organs interact with each other uh, and the perform the functions and when you talk about this neural control and coordination neural control and coordination it is a point to point connection for quick coordination whereas endocrine system provides the chemical integration through hormones when you try to understand the neural system neural system is composed of neurons neuron is the structure and functional unit of nervous system it is present in most of the vertebrates and it is a specialized as well as well equipped or well uh, modified in the case of the humans when you talk about the humans so when you talk about the neuron the whatever you are seeing on the screen is a neuron neuron is of many structures and shapes but here whatever you are seeing it is a generalized neuron and in this neuron you can able to see that uh, you can able to see that it is almost an pentagonal or hexagonal structure uh, with the top wherever you are seeing this these are called as the dendrites dendrites are present and inside of these inside of these you can see that nucleus is present nucleus is present around the nucleus you can see that uh, there are there are several of the nasal granules and you can see that on one side a long dendrite like structure called as axon is present axon is present and some axons are supported with the outer covering the called as schwann myelin sheath myelin sheath is formed from the schwann cells and the biggest of all the neuron structure is cyton or cell body or pericardia to that axon is connected some axons are connected with the structures on the outer side called as myelin sheath myelin sheath consists of schwann cells schwann cells are formed from the myelin sheath and which does not have this myelin sheath are called as non myelinated neurons if myelin sheath is present they are called as myelinated neurons and you can also see that between the uh, two myelin sheath there is a structure called as nodes of ranavir the nodes of ranavir nowadays they are saying that it is skipping or the information is jumping from one source to the other source so that is the information is passing from the axon and jumping to the nodes of ranavir from the nodes of ranavir the information is so like this the jumping of information is discovered nowadays and at the end of this axon you can see that branched structure called as axon terminals at the end of the each axon terminal you can see a structure called as synaptic knob the synaptic knob will be connected to the <coughs> dendrite of the other neuron to pass the information so based on these neurons 
generally human nervous system human neural system or human nervous system is divided into central nervous system means your brain and spinal cord and spinal cord comes under this in the central nervous system peripheral nervous system is the next system peripheral under the peripheral nervous system you can see that you can see that all the nerves which are constituted with the this is also called as somatic neural system so your pns is again divided into pns is again divided into is having the efferent nerves pns is having the efferent nerves and efferent nerves efferent means also called as incoming nerves or efferent nerves or sensory nerves efferent nerves also called as motor nerves or efferent neurons or outgoing nerves so when you talk about this <coughs> the and based on the structure of the neuron presence of one presence of one axon plus more than two dendrites that are called as multipolar neurons and if they are only one one new axon plus one dendrite they are called as bipolar and if they are one axon only they are called as unipolar and when the structure of the neuron is having when the structure of the neuron is having the cyton at one side these are called pseudo unipolar neurons so generally based on this <coughs> multipolar are present most of the body unipolar are present generally inside the brain and bipolar are present in the retina pseudo unipolar in the case of the embryonic stages so when you come on to the conduction of the nerve impulses so here a energy potential called as electricity is produced as you know that electricity is produced by the movement of electrons from one place to other place the electricity is generated because it carries the information when you talk about the neurons generally neurons are in the polarized state that is the resting state but when there is a action potential generated at a assume that at a point a here we need to know that three sodium plus ions every time moves outside then the two k plus ions moves into the so they are moved by a specialized channels called as sodium and potassium pumps as a result of that you can see that generally potassium is impermeable to impermeable to sodium ions means potassium ions will move in and out without the involvement of sodium ions but sodium ions are involved in the by the movement of the exchange in ions so here and so whatever you are seeing outside of this outside of this this is called as out uh, mean a uh, uh, mean neural membrane outside exoderm or outside the neural membrane and this side is also called as outside the neural membrane the inside where you see the colored part is called as a intraneural membrane or neural tissue that is inside of the axon so when these are in the when these are in the state of resting potential no ionic exchange takes place but when there is a action potential generated at point a you can see that the movement of ions from the point b to point a point a to point uh, point a to uh, that is occurring from the b to a and at the same time the movement of ions inside the neural membrane is taking place from the point a 
A to B means there is a exchange moment of ions. Because of these moment of ions, you can see that uh, there is a continuous moment of energy, and there will be <clears throat> once the moment of electrons with information by after generating the action potential has crossed that the. Of the previous part which has carried the information will go into the resting potential. So here you need to understand for there is a every time when an action potential is generated, the action potential on the outside of the membrane starts from the point B for the exchange of ions and that will move to the inner side of the membrane through the point A. Where action put in. As a result, the polarization, polarized state to depolar, repolar, depolarize that is exchange of ions takes place. From the repolarization, depolarization to repolarization takes place in such a way that the information is passing from in the forward direction. So, when there is a continuous movement of energy, the transmission of impulses takes place. So, whatever you are seeing this part, this part is called as a synaptic knob. And in the synapse, the information, where the information is produced that will be transmitted through the above channel up to the synaptic knob at the synaptic knob level. Synaptic knob level you can see that you are seeing the smallest structure called as synaptic vesicles. These synaptic vesicles have got the information from the axon which has been transmitted by the above method <coughs> will reach them and they, they will be consisting of the information and you can see that uh, this part whatever you are is called as a synaptic cleft. This portion where you can see the receptors are present and whatever is going to get the information is called as the post synaptic membrane and the place present between the synaptic knob is called as a synaptic cleft and the, the uh, neuron with synaptic knob containing the information is called as a presynaptic knob. So the synaptic vesicles contain the information and you can see that this part is the axon terminal. Through that axon terminal the axon is the information is passed. Based on the type of, so this complete process is called as synapse. Formation of a information counter called as synapses will take place. So, when the synapsis takes place, the information will be received by the receptors present on the postsynaptic neuron membrane or, or postsynaptic mem membrane of, of the neuron is taken, whether that information is going to open the receptors or not. If the information is going to open the receptor, then only the information will be passed from the the previous, that is the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron to the synaptic cleft. And here the powerful neurotransmitter which is transmitting the information. Generally in our body 95% information is the chemical transformation information that is to the acetyl coenzyme A, uh, acetyl choline that is acetyl -A. But <clears throat> there are certain electrical informations are also passed and humans it is generally in our human body it is the acetylcholine that is chemical passing information only. So when you take on to the next part, so where the information may be excitatory or inhibitory, when you talk about the central nervous system, the main part of the central nervous system is called as brain. Brain consists of three parts. One is called as the forebrain or prosencephalon, mesencephalon, midbrain, rhombencephalon or hindbrain. 
and generally the brain at the base of the brain you can see that hypothalamus is present this hypothalamus is considered to be the master of all glands which is not the exact gland but it control all the glands and you can see that the hind brain is composed of pons varoli cerebellum and medulla oblongata medulla oblongata runs has the spinal cord and the cerebrum is divided into four parts that is four uh, it is divided into two parts called as two cerebral hemispheres one cerebral hemisphere this side one cerebral hemisphere this side and between these two cerebral hemispheres a notch or a deep brew is present at the base of which the deep brew you can see that um, if there's two are attached the place where the two are attached at the thalamus region is called as diencephalon diencephalon is connecting the two cerebellum cerebral hemispheres and <clears throat> to this with the help of a stalk like structure called as hypothalamus is attached hypothalamus is also controlling many functions like hypothalamus is controlling most of the functions like tem body temperature thirst hunger emotions intelligence rhythm uh, the rhythms and as well as the sexual behavior and coming on to the brain brain fun approximately does 72 functions and the major functions of these are brain is basically divided okay brain is basically divided into cerebrum thalamus and hypothalamus and the major functions of the <coughs> hypothalamus already we have discussed that body temperature urge of eating drinking and, and other neurosensory functions and as well as you can also see that there is a part inner part of cerebral hemispheres consist a group of associated deep structures called as amygdala and hippocampus amygdala and hippocampus which is con constitutely called as limbic system limbic system so in this uh, limbic system you can see that there will be the hypothalamus you can see that that is controlling the functions like hypothetics already we have discussed that hypothalamus consists of a uh, temperature of the body hunger of the body emotions of the body eating urge of the body water thirst of the body and also the sexual behavior of the body now coming on to the Midbrain. Midbrain is again divided into midbrain is a part which we cannot see externally, but it is connecting the forebrain with the hindbrain. And a duct called cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqui. Cerebral aqueduct is present, which is connecting the <clears throat> forebrain with the hind brain and you can also see that uh, it will pass the through the pons varoli of the hind brain and here you can see that uh, <clears throat> they are the midbrain is of four round swellings called as corpora quadri gemina corpora quadri gemina is present and pons have the chemosynthetic area and respiratory rhythmatic center and cerebrum controls like voluntary motions movements of the body medulla controls certain most of the functions of the body in justification and so on so next part reflex action and reflex arc when you talk about the reflex action, reflex means a sudden discontinuous action which is not under the control of brain or which is happening without the involvement of the brain when the brain is taking the resting position or in the another process is called as a reflex action. The, as it is forming a arc like structure it is also called as reflex arc. 
in the reflex arc you can see that the major parts involved is the spinal cord like it is a it uh, mean this functions will be generally controlled by the spinal cord only in the absence of brain or non functional activity of the brain the major parts of a reflex action are you can see in the diagram <coughs> the efferent pathway that is the um, mean now taking the information from the receptors of the effector are gone to the spinal cord and a, in the case of the spinal cord we see a group of associated neurons called as interneurons is present interneurons are associated neurons which process the information pass the same information to take the certain reaction through the efferent pathway that is the motor neuron system from the if interneurons are associated neurons into the effector organ so when you suddenly drop your a leg on to a hot or uh, hot or sharp object without your control immediately your leg starts retracting from the position or when there is a jet given by the orthopedicians on the knee position you, uh, you will just shake your legs so this is what called as a reflex action generally the scientist who is responsible for doing more experiments on a reflexes that is conditional reflexes was ivan pavlo ivan pavlo for the which he got the nobel prize on a dog so according to him the reflexes are two types which are sudden discontinuous actions called as uncontrolled or unconditional reflex actions and the second type are called as conditioned reflex actions generally conditioned reflex actions are the uh, learned reflexes and unconditional reflexes are a unlearned or by birth conditions now coming on to the eye eye is one of the important sensory organ present in the body located in the orbits of the skull called as orbits and when you talk about the function the it is majorly photo receptor in function that is light taking information and when you see the structure of a eye eye is having the three layers that is sclera choroid and retina retina is the innermost layer sclera is the outermost layer the sclera at the front portion of the eye is modified into a bulged cor con vex structure called as cornea and <clears throat> the second part called as the choroid layer at the front portion will be having a modified ciliary bodies called as ciliary bodies where they will be holding the lens a crystalline lens inside the eye between the cornea and lens we see a space called as aqueous chamber and it consists of a fluid like structure called as aqueous humor and from the back of the lens to the retina retina is the third layer is called retina retina is not present on the front side of the eye where the cornea and lens are present it is only restricted to the back side that is 80 percentage between the lens from the horizontal position up to the retina and from the upper side of the retina to the lower side of the retina in the vertical direction vertical direction horizontal direction it is completely filled with a fluid called as vitreous humor and the chamber where the vitreous humor is present is called as a vitreous chamber and you can see that where the lens is accurately concentrating more on the retina region there that region is called as fovea centralis or yellow spot or yellow spot or where there will be more number of rods and cones cones and <clears throat> generally rods are equally distributed rods are meant for gray color vision and the uh, cones are meant for gray and gray color vision or dark vision generally <clears throat> these 
Rods and cones consist of two types of pigments called as rhodopsin is present in the rods and edopsin is these are the derivatives of the different types of aldehydes as well as the protein molecules and this will be reconstructed with the help of the vitamin A presence and you can see that the, the retina is connecting uh, passing out of the ear at a portion where there will be no formation of a image called as the blind spot or black spot where this optic nerves will leave from the eyes and based on the defects of the eyes you can see that the cataract as well as the myopia or hypermetropia takes place in the case of myopia the image is formed before the retina in the case of hypermetropia the image will be formed away from the lens so in the case of this is long sightedness and this is called as short sightedness that is image is formed just before the retina so these are convert generally uh, <coughs> these are corrected by the using the respective lenses that is concave or convex lenses and now coming on to the next one ear so ear is the next important sensory organ present which is converting the sound information into the hearing information so when you see under a structure of ear you can see that uh, the ear is basically divided into three regions so the first one called as external ear middle ear and internal ear the external ear is a where the, the external ear pin along with the opening of the ear canal takes place the ear canal is also called as auditory nerves <coughs> and uh, the middle ear is on the upper side is composed of a bone called as temporal bone and at the end of the middle ear you can see a structure where it is a dab it is called as tympanic membrane or eardrum and which is connected to the malus the first bone followed by the second bone called as incus and the third bone which is uh, mean which is present uh, which is covering the oval window of the cochlea cochlea is cochlea and the steps will be forming the middle inner ear middle inner ear and you can see that a nerve arises from the cochlea called as the cochlear nerve or auditory nerve which will take the information to the two parts of the brain and there is a canal which is generally present near to the tympanic membrane and connecting the pharynx of our body called as eustachian tube or eustachian canal this eustachian canal will pass the information excess any information which is going to be impinge on the eardrum with high ratios will be passed into the into the pharynx and that will be destroyed so when you look on to the internal structure of a ear the you can see that outer side of this ear you can see a fluid called as perilymph is present inside of this the fluid called as endolymph is present the outer side of the the which is near to the vestibular so here you are seeing a three structures called as vestibular canals also called as semi lunar or semi circular canals these vestibular canals and the eustachian tube are responsible for the maintenance of equilibrium in the body of the body that is standing position erect and when you see on to the the sectional view of 
sectional view of ear you can see that the complete outer part is filled with fluid called as endo a so lymph or peri lymph and inner to that it is filled with a fluid called as endo lymph so endo lymph is covering all over the the scala vestibula this portion called as scala vestibula this part is called as scala media and this is called as scala tympani may as this is near to the tympanic membrane it is called as this is near to the tympanic membrane it is called as scala tympani and this is near to the scala vestibular semi circular canals or vestibular canal semi vestibular canal so these are called as semi vestibuli between the scala <coughs> vestibula and scala main in uh, scala tympani you can see the the scala media scala is media is the complete covering where inside of this scala media you can see a structure which is responsible the conversion of the auditory information into the brain readable information called as organ of cortis present and organ of cortis present on the top side of the scala vestibuli in the base above the basilar membrane so the organ of vestibuli uh, organ of cortis connect uh, the organ of cortis connected to the efferent nervous system if efferent nervous system of the auditory nerve and you can also see that uh, they are covered by a membrane called as tectorial membrane and including that uh, you can also see that uh, you can also see that otiolith oth organ is also present in the case of the Yes, responsible for the so already we have discussed that already we have discussed that the next part is the chemical control and coordination this is also uh, the endocrine system is also called as chemical control and coordination system which is a <coughs> which is through the production of hormones here when you talk about the hormones hormones are the non nutrient chemicals which act as a intracellular messengers and produced in very very trace amounts that is very very minute quantities any excess production of these components will lead to the uh, either abnormalities in the body excess or low production 
Now, when you talk about the human endocrine system, human endocrine system is uh, having approximately seven, seven, seven glands in the male and seven glands in the female, but eight glands completely. That is. Either testes or ovaries are only present based on the reproductive organs present in the male or female. Testes are specifically for males and ovaries are only meant for the female reproductive system. Except that all will be having, all the others are same. Now coming on to this, from the upper position to the lower position, you can see that there are eight type of glands called as pineal gland, pineal gland followed by the hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid and parathyroid, thymus, pancreas, adrenal, testes in the case of male and ovaries in the case of female. So here you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 in the case of male, 8 in the case of female. Why we are only discuss 7 means in the case they are coming to the thymus, thymus will be degenerated after puberty, slowly it is diminishing after puberty. So 8, <coughs> 8, Yet in yet in <coughs> male yet in female eight in male eight in female and thymus degenerated so seven glands in each and nine glands completely. Now we try to talk about the so here one of the major improve important gland because only why we are called seven means hypothalamus is considered to be the part of a brain but it is not considered uh, considered to be the part of the hormonal system but it is helping the uh, glands to produce that so here a specialized soft tissue to produce certain chemical substances under the control of hypothalamus is called as a gland so it will be having a special type of tissues and you can see that hypothalamus is called as the master of all glands master of all glands or the <clears throat> it is controlling factor of all glands and generally apart from that it controls the endocrine secretions already we have discussed so it will be producing two types of hormones the Hypothalamus will be producing two top of hormones. One is called as releasing hormones, and the second type are called as inhibiting hormones. Based on the releasing hormone production and the inhibiting hormone production, the system, the all the other systems will be functionality. Coming on to the pineal gland. So your pineal gland is generally responsible for the production of melatonin. Pineal gland is production for the melatonin by the, with the help of melanocyte stimulating hormone. And here we need to talk first about the pituitary gland. So pituitary gland is considered to be the artist of all glands. Generally this the pituitary gland is having two regions. One is called as adenohypophysis, neurohypophysis. So the pituitary is divided into anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis or posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis and neuro Posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis between these two, a junction is called as pars intermedia. But generally, pars intermedia is considered to be the part of a prior in posterior pituitary. Coming on to the production of the hormones of the pituitary, so anterior pituitary produces growth hormone. 
adrenocorticotropin prolactin thyroid stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone so here adenohypophysis produces adenohypophysis produces growth hormone growth hormone adrenocorticotropin prolactin follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone and the pars distally pars intermedia of the posterior pituitary produces melan melanocyte will msh acts on the this is produced from the <clears throat> pars intermedia and acts on the pineal gland to produce the melanocyte stimulating hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone gives the coloration pigmentation to the color body color including that it also maintains the circadian rhythms the sleep wake cycle body temperature as well as it also helps the majorly in the menstrual cycle of defense capability now coming on to the next one pituitary so the next one the last part posterior pituitary produces oxytocin and vasopressin so these are produced generally these are produced inside the not in, hypothalamus they are but they are activated in the pituitary so they are called as neurohypophysis they will be transmitted to these systems now coming to the next hormone say called as a thyroid hormone when you see on to the thyroid hormone you can see that hypothalamus and hypothalamic will be producing two hormones and sent to the posterior pituitary to the hypothalamic neurons uh, through a portal circulator and and you can see that the the next one is called as the upper one is called as a thyroid gland it is present on the front side of the trachea and this produces thyroxine and due to the deficiency of this there are two types of thyroxines one is called as t3 thyroxine t4 thyroxine t4 thyroxine is also called as tetraiodothyroxine t3 thyroxine is also called as triiodothyroxine because of the deficiency of the triiodothyroxine simple goiter takes place simple goiter because of t3 thyroxine and come because deficiency of the iodine in our doubt leads to hypothyroidism and in this because of this the enlargement takes place in the neck region and you can also see that hypothyroidism during the pregnancy and development leads to that ir mean leads to the defective development of the baby and leading to the stunted growth called as cretinism so when there is a for mother there is a triiodothyroxine deficiency so that may leads to the baby stunted growth called as cretinism which may leads to the mental retardation lower intelligent quotient abnormal skin and deaf mutism in adult women hypothyroidism may cause the menstrual cycle to become irregular also the thyroid gland or the development of nodules are because of over production because of cancers to the thyroid gland there is a chance of production of hyperthyroidism which is adverse generally this may lead to the exothalamic goiter and when there is a uh, that occurs in the case of the hyperthyroidism in the case of the adults that may lead to a disease called as devil syndrome or graves disease generally 
the thyroid hormone maintains the basal metabolic rate and also supports the red blood cell production as well as it is also involved in the control of metabolism of carbohydrates proteins and fats and also it is helpful in the maintenance of water and electrolytic balance in is in also influenced by the thyroid gland now coming on to the parathyroid gland here we are seeing that second one called as a parathyroid gland here you can see that four p shaped structures present on the back side of the thyroid gland is called as a parathyroid gland this parathyroid gland is producing a hormone called as parathormone generally parathormone main function is to maintain the calcium metabolism in the body that is circulation of calcium ions generally you can also see that when there is a calcium absorption that may leads to the digest problems in the digested food as well as you can also see that it is mostly uh, we can uh, that may leads to a hypercalcemic hormone when there is a deficiency of this the contra the bones will be contra in a contracted state called as tetany tetany will be caused by two things clostridium bordetella tetany which is a bacterium along with the hormonal secretion tth that is parathormone also now the next hormone called as the thymus thymus is present on the on the back of the heart and this is responsible for the immunity development which is a cell mediated immunity and tumoral immunity now coming on to the next gland called as adrenal gland adrenal gland is a gland present on the top of the kidneys this adrenal gland is responsible for the this it is having two portions the outer portion called as adrenal cortex adrenal cortex region cortex pro produces two hormones called as uh, aldosterone and cortisols cortisols are helpful in the maintenance of the cortisols are ma generally ma uh, maintenance of the body maintenance of the different uh, mineralocorticoids these are called as and as well as the aldosterone which is responsible for which is a steroidal hormone for the maintenance of the and in the case of medulla region adrenal medulla is the middle portion or the portion which is present in the red color region called as medulla this produces a hormone called as adrenaline or also called as along with that adrenaline nor adrenaline or nor epinephrine is produced these two are called as keto kilo amines and uh, this adrenaline is also called as stress hormone or flight fight hormone and you can see that uh, the regions the adrenal cortex of the uh, adrenal gland is divided into zona recticularis inner layer zona fasciculata middle layer and zona glomerulosa the adrenal corticoid secretes many hormones commonly called as corticoids which are generally called as mineral corticoids or glucocorticoids generally most of the which maintains the body balance in water electrolytes and other parts in our body and aldosterone is also produced from that which is a mineralocorticoid and steroidal hormone the glucocorticoids stimulate the gluconeogenesis that is production of new glucose molecules and lipolysis breakdown of the fat into and uh, proteolysis breakdown of proteins into amino acids will be taking place and you can also see that this uh, adrenal gland will play a major role during the growth of the secondary sexual characters now coming on to the next hormone called as pancreas when you see on to the pancreas in the digestive system it is located